Hardcore Nuzlocke's bring a challenging and unique aspect to a Pokemon playthrough. The rules are quite simple, if a Pokemon faints you cannot use it again, the first Pokemon in each route must be caught, no items can be used in battle and you cannot over level past the gym leader's max level Pokemon. I like these but I wanted to make it a bit more challenging so I'm creating what I think is a true hardcore Nuzlocke. I know it's a bad name but it is what it is. These extra rules are as follows, I'm not allowed to use any held items. Multiple zone areas only count as one, so like the Savari zone, you can only catch one Pokemon within it. And you can't use any more Pokemon than you have badges, with the exception of the first one, as you can't use zero Pokemon. And on top of all that, I'm only allowed to use poison type Pokemon in this run. The first battle goes fine, but since I've got Bulbasaur, it's a bit touch and go, but we do win it, thankfully, and we don't have to reset. We then go and catch our first encounter in Kakuna. After this, we head on to Brock. Now, we've got Bulbasaur, so I think you guys know exactly how this will go. We've got Vine Whip on it and we one shot both his Pokemon as they're four times weak to it. After this we catch a Nidoran on the route just before Mount Moon and then we go and get a Zubat within Mount Moon. By the time I make it to Misty I've got an Ivysaur so I decide to go straight into the battle. I take down the Staryu with a Vine Whip and then comes out the Starmie. I know this thing is pretty strong especially when under leveled like I am so I decide to go for Sleep Powder and Leech Seed to try and claw back the damage it's done on its first attack. I then switch to Vine Whip to try and take it out and thankfully it never wakes up so we manage to get through this gym badge with no trouble. I then have the SSN fight. However, now I have a Nido King and at this point in the game it's actually pretty powerful and because of that I think you can guess how this went. We used Double Kick versus the Pidgeotto and after three of them we managed to take it out. Kadabra comes out and is really weak defensively so one dig finishes it off with ease. Raticate manages to do some decent damage however two digs finish it off. Double Kick maybe would have been better but obviously I misplayed a touch. Then the Charmeleon comes out it's fire type so one dig ends the battle after this we go and catch an oddish and head on to surge now we've got nido king and dig so surge is actually relatively easy the only thing we need to worry about is the pikachu and raichu with their double team we do miss a fair few attacks because of this and we do get paralyzed by pikachu's static but neither of them can do major damage to us so we managed to get through it with very little damage done by the time we get to erica we've got a goal bat and that knows wing attack so it's fairly easy we do get paralysed by the Victory Bell, but it's very easy to take down as it only takes us two hits. The Tangler then only takes one hit, and the Vile Plume follows the exact same pattern as the Victory Bell did. After this, we go and battle Giovanni. Now, Giovanni's team is easy. However, the Kangaskhan takes my Nido King low, so I have to switch out. I choose to switch out to my Ivysaur. I waste a turn by trying to use Sleep Powder on a Poison Pokemon because I'm a genius. And because of that, I pay the price because Kangaskhan takes out our Ivysaur. And the poison damage takes it out, meaning that one turn did make the difference and we could have got through it without losing it. We then have another rival fight. I take down the Pidgeotto in the same way with double kicks. Switch into the Golbat for a wing attack on the Execute. Stay in and wing attack the Kadabra since it's weak defensively. It's a one shot. Gyarados comes out and I choose to confuse it and then start wing attacking. Hits itself once. I get three wing attacks. We beat it. We finally have Charmeleon to take down, but it's only one dig and we win that battle. I then catch a Ghastly in Pokemon Tower and a Venonat near Fuchsia. After some grinding, we can finally go and take on Koga. I'll leave with Venon off as they know confusion. The first coffin goes down in three hits, then Muk comes out and I try to confuse it to get a safe switch in. It doesn't work, but Sludge does no damage anyway and we need to continue digging until we finally get past this tanky glob. I switch back into Venomoth and take the second coffin out the same as the first. I stay in for Weezer as I'm expecting it to go just as easily. However, it uses two sludges and we lose a second Pokemon in our Venomoth. I then accidentally send in my Beedrill, do one hit, realise I'm doing no damage, so switch out to my Haunter and one Nightshade is enough to take it out and get us the badge. After this, we have the Sylph Rival fight. I lead with Golbat and take the Pidgeotto out. Get one hit on the Execute before being paralysed, so I switch into my Beedrill, which finishes it off with the Twin Needle. Alakazam comes out and uses Future Sight, so we can take it out with one Twin Needle. Then Charizard comes out. I know I'll lose my Beedrill if I stay in, so I switch to Nido King. It uses Flamethrower, which takes us low, but thankfully one Surf manages to take it out. After that, I take the Future Side and decide I need to switch out, so I switch into Vile Plume and use a combo of Sleep Powder and Giga Drain to take down the Gyarados. We then have another rival fight, but Nido King has such a diverse move pool by now that we absolutely sweep past every one of his Pokemon. He barely even manages to do 20 damage to us. Now we have Sabrina and we start with Beedrill. I use Agility so I can outspeed all of the Pokemon and then proceed to use Twin Needle. 
This one shots the Kadabra and the Mr. Mime, however not the Alakazam, but we do get lucky because it uses a future sight. We also do get a poison, but since we're faster that didn't really matter. Then the Venomoth comes out, so I decide it's time to switch into my Golbat. And after two wing attacks, we win the battle and we can finally use a full team. After this, we go and catch a Tentacool on the way to Cinnabar. We train this Tentacool up until it's a Tentacruel and then go for Blaine's Gym. And this goes exactly as you would expect with us being a water type and knowing Surf, we sweep through the entire team with such ease. We then have Giovanni. I decide to start with Tentacruel and with Surf, we manage to take down every Pokemon in one up until the Nido Queen, which manages to do a lot of damage to us. We do eventually manage to take it out. However, at this point, I don't know if Nido King will be one shot. So I send out Golbat so I can avoid the earthquake damage and confuse it. I then use two wing attacks, one of which being a crit. First of the run, by the way, and that gives us the final gym badge. We've now got the rival fight before the Elite Four, and for this I start off with Tentacruel and use Surfs to take down the Pidgeot. I then switch into Beedrill to take down the Alakazam with a Twin Needle. Rhyhorn comes out, so I switch to Tentacruel, use a Surf and take that down. Execute comes out, so I decide to switch to Golbat and use a Wing Attack to take it out. Gyarados comes out, meaning that I have to switch into Vileplume, and I use four Giga Drains, however he switches to Charizard on the last one. This means I need to switch into my Needle King. After a Rock Tomb and a Surf, we take it out. Gyarados is all that's left and it's low, so we switch into Vileplume and get the victory with one last Giga Drain. Now, onto the final challenge being the Elite Four. First off is Lorelei, and I start off with my Nido King. It takes two Rock Slides to take the Dugong out, then I switch into Vileplume so I can take the Cloister out with Sleep Powder and Giga Drain, as Rock Slide is going to do nothing to it. I use the same tactic versus Slowbro, which gives me full health for the Lapras coming in. Versus the Lapras, I put it to sleep and then Giga Drain. However, I notice I won't take it out with one more due to the Berry Heal. So what I have to do instead is I have to use Cut and Giga Drain in order to finish it off. Jinx then gives me a taste of my own medicine by putting me to sleep. So I switch back into my Nudo King, which is nearly taken out. Since Rock Slide isn't 100% accuracy, I switch into my Beedrill who uses one Twin Needle and wins us the battle. We've now got Bruno and I use Tentacruel to start off which uses Surf to take down his first two Onyx. I have no idea why he sends out that second Onyx versus Tentacruel. It's such a terrible move. Thinking because it's ground type, maybe the AI thinks it's going to be good. He then sends out Hitmonchan, so I switch into Vileplume and put it to sleep as I want to get my Golbat switched in, but I want it to be a safe switch in. It wakes up after one Wing Attack and hits a Rock Tomb. However, we manage to take it out due to it healing and not managing to hit us again. The Machamp then comes out and for whatever reason, Bruno decides I'm just not going to attack and he uses Cross Chop once. It misses, but I don't think it would have taken us out anyway, so we take it out for free. Hitmonlee does manage to get a Mega Kick on us, but it wasn't enough to take us out and unfortunately for him, he's a one shot and we only need that to win the battle. We now go into Agatha, who seems to be doing the same as us using only Poison type, but because of this, I taught my Haunt a Psychic, and that means that we can just use Psychic on every one of a Pokemon. The only chance of losing Haunter is if it uses Hypnosis, but it uses a Shadow Ball, meaning we get low, but we can take it out and get the win. I don't know why she played like this. Like, if she'd have used Hypnosis, we'd have had to switch out, maybe we'd have struggled, maybe we wouldn't have. Golbat probably would have won it, but I'm not 100% sure. Now we can move on to Lance, and since he leaves with a Gyarados, I decide to start off with my Vileplume. I use Sleep Powder on it, and then proceed to Giga Drain till it's at half health, at which point Lance switches out to his Dragonite. I make the mistake of trying to put it to sleep, and it's faster than us, so it one-shots us using Wing Attack. This honestly scared me, as I did want Vileplume for the champion fight, but now we've lost it, so we cannot use it. But anyway, we need to carry on, so we switch into Tentacruel and use Ice Beam until we see the Gyarados again. Since it's asleep, I switch to Nido King to take it out with a Rock Slide. He then sends his Aerodactyl out, and it only takes two Surfs to take it out as it's a Rock type Pokemon. After this, all that's left is a Dragonair, so I switch back into Tentacruel. I am paralyzed, but. I think it'll be alright and I do get through, I use the Ice Beam and finish him off. Now we have the final battle being against the champion. I start out with Nido King to Rock Slide till the Pidgeot is taken out. His Alakazam then comes in and I want a safe switch in so I switch to Golbat and I'm planning to try and confuse it. Unfortunately it uses one Psychic and takes Golbat out. I really thought Golbat would survive this as I wanted him for the Executor. But because of Golbat's sacrifice we managed to get a safe switch into Haunter. I then don't take out with a Shadow Ball. Thankfully it uses Future Sight. I don't know why it did this. 
So I survive, and because of it healing, it takes two turns to take it out. I switch into Tentacruel for the Gyarados, but notice Ice Beam is doing nothing, which, yeah, it's obviously doing nothing. Why have I done that? So, that being said, I need to switch into something like my Nido King, which I do, and I have to use Rock Slide until it's beaten. Out comes the Rhydon, but that thing's four times a week to a Surf, so we can stay in and just use a Surf versus it. Then the Executor comes out, so I decide to switch into Beedrill, as I can take it down with a Twin Needle. Unfortunately, the turn it's about to be taken out, he switches into Charizard. I just take the hit, as I know switching into any other my Pokemon would take them out, as they are all low, and I want them to take the Charizard on. Nido King comes out, uses one Surf to beat it, but we do lose the Beedrill. Thankfully though, we have a Tentacruel with Ice Beam and Exeggutor is half Grass type, meaning we just need to use one Ice Beam versus it and we win the battle. It cost us almost every single one of our Pokemon, but we did manage to do it and I know I'm going to learn from what I've done in this in future runs and hopefully not have such a hard time on the final battle. And there we have it, that's it. So I really enjoyed this challenge, and it's actually one of the first times I've done a Nuzlocke, so it's quite new to me, and I'd love to do a few more of these, especially with the rules I've put in place, as it did make it very fun. I'll probably do Heart Gold next, as Johto is my favourite region. Maybe using one of the starter types, so like a water type is maybe the way I'll go, but we'll see what I come with. Hope you all enjoyed the video. On the screen now is what YouTube is recommending you watch next if you want to continue watching my content. If you enjoyed, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it would really help me grow and get this content to a wider audience and allow me to have more conversations about Pokemon with you guys. Leave suggestions or advice down in the comments below on ways I could improve any of my videos or even improve my play at Pokemon. Thank you for your time and goodbye.